so thank you i'm so excited blair? should i call you blair therefore because it's a blair <laughs> Blair Bryan is my pen name. I also write, my real name is Nina, and I also write under that name as okay. well. Okay. Okay. So, just, I mean, since you signed the book as Blair Bryan, very <laughs> few of it. the books, I have seven bookcases because I'm a reader. You and are. And I only have five or so books by their authors. One of them, because I can, that's signed by the authors. One of them, because I can, is by is this book which i have two of it why that's awesome have, why do i have you know i know i'm extra but why <laughs> do i have two of the same book because one of them is unsigned uh -huh. and the other is signed yeah, by perfect. the one and only a lock whoa man if you know <laughs> the non-binary space then you know a lock babe Manon. i met this human being Got a picture with them, and let me tell you, <laughs> yes, we have to grab props, honey. That's how you sell the moment. Yes, yes, yes. I, yes. I am extra, but why would I have two <laughs> freaking books, both of them for free? This was a giveaway when um, Ted Cruz talked junk about the book, and it went off the market, <sighs> and they were like, if you, I don't know, like this post or whatever, you get a free copy. And I did. And That's then, awesome. Boom. We went <laughs> to agitate at the governor's mansion recently, if you don't know yet. I did. And who was there? I like. So, yeah. Meant to be. It's meant to go. be. Okay. So, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank Me you. Dr. Lulu. And yes, I wake up in beast mode. That's how I do. <laughs> That's how this I do. This is the first episode of Parents of Queers podcast. Awesome. Thanks to my guest. <laughs> We're doing it on Instagram. It was really supposed to be on Zoom. But hey, who cares? <laughs> we are exactly. on Instagram because she made a huge fuss about it being on Instagram. I said, you know what? We're going to go on Instagram and we're going to make the show happen. That Good. is how you pivot. That, exactly. You morph as is needed <laughs> by your clients. So my name is Dr. Lulu, a.k.a. The Momatrician. I'm uh -huh. a real doctor. Yeah. Yes. I'm a pediatrician and I'm also a life coach and I specifically mentor parents of queer kids. Hence the podcast. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right so there. It's called parents of queers podcast. And I'm going to be speaking mostly to parents of queers. Yeah. This one happens to have, because she's extra. She's a parent of a queer <laughs> child and she's an author. <laughs> Even about. in my regular podcast, which is called The Pride Corner, I have special space for authors. So I usually have authors on my podcast because I've only written, I don't know what, six books? So <laughs> I love to talk to authors. I think they're very smart Absolutely. people. And Michelle is about to become an author. Oh, that's I'm awesome. trying to get her to be an author. So Michelle, hey, sis, yeah. I love you. But that's amazing. Michelle. The show is about <laughs> my guest. So welcome to the show, Blair. Thank you. Brian! Yay! I'm really excited to be here. This is my first yes. podcast. First yes. podcast ever. So I'm I pretty know pumped. I heard you say that it's your first podcast ever. <laughs> so essentially I just popped your chair, right? You Not did. <laughs> and you That's are so um my fifth, yeah, my fifth guest or sixth guest, maybe even seventh guest who I was able to pop their virgin cherry. Yes, wow, you're I did. Just spreading it out there. Good for you. It's what we do, honey. It's yes, what yes. we do. I am so <laughs> excited. I am so excited. If, you, if you've seen my other podcast called The Pride Corner, you will recognize that, yes, I am standing at the Pride Corner. That corner right there, the corner between my door and mm -hmm. my flags. So yes. if you don't like the heat, get out. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yes. We don't play. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Welcome. So before we get started mm -hmm. on the very first episode of Parents of Queers podcast, I want you, if you can hear my voice, tap on the triangle at the bottom of your screen. Let's all do it together. And then invite the first 20 or first 10 people you find right there. 
That is one way to get more people to see it. Yes. Yeah. It's not going to be the best kept secret anymore. We're going to tell people it's what we do. Absolutely. So please invite the first 20 people you can see and just press send. Okay. Because we do not care. We do not care whether they like it or not. We're going to invite them. And Instagram can do whatever Instagram likes, but we are going to invite the first 20 people. And I think I'm over 20. Okay. It says too many recipients. So I sent as many as I could. Um, but so the show is called the Parents of Queers podcast. It is my first ever. I've been dreaming about, dreaming about doing this podcast for about a year now. Mm -hmm. And um, because I have ADD and I'm very proudly ADD, and so is Michelle, by the way, <laughs> I decided I, and I was going to do one other podcast and another one. And then whenever I get enough parents who want to come talk, we can actually launch the podcast. So this is my first ever Parents of Queers podcast. So Brian, Blair, rather, welcome. I'm so proud Thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Excited. Yes, now that I'm done talking about myself, let's ask um, a, a couple of questions. Why did you decide to come on this podcast? Why? Uh, well, I did a little research on you. I looked at your website and I just, I really, um, I understood your story. I thought it was really brave of you. I, the the Keep way going. that your, the way that your life has kind of unfolded, especially maybe in the last, you know, little bit. I don't know how long it's been since you've pivoted from being the doctor to pursuing this other opportunity. Mm -hmm. But that takes, that takes a lot of guts to do that. And I think that that's awesome. So for doing that, um, it, it really is something that needs to happen. You know, I, when I was researching for the book, one of the most stunning statistics was that when an LGBTQ plus child has an accepting parent, the suicide rate goes from 41% down to six. Six percent. Yes. Yes. Actually, it's down to four now, I think. That's um, amazing. But That's yes, amazing. less than 10% for sure. Yes. And I yep. have the same statistic in my new book. I don't know where it, oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Look at you. Uh, let me tell you. Let me, I think, I thought it was maybe, it, it doesn't matter what the number is. The point is whether the child is LGBT or not, all you need is one affirming trusted adult in a teenager's life and they yes. will thrive and if they are formerly suicidal they will not jump so you know what more power to all of us those of us who are making it look like it's easy because it's not no and i have to say not. this because i'm a black mother of a black trans woman in america today they have the highest rate of, of homicides so yeah I, I live in constant reality of that being a possibility. But we're not Absolutely. going to focus on that. Right. Because fear has never been known to lead anybody anywhere. So when Any, anywhere good. Anywhere, anywhere <laughs> good. Really anywhere, <laughs> honestly. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm excited to talk to you about the show about the book. I'm excited to have you on the show. I did try to invite a few of my friends. Um to see if they would, they're all moms of queers. So we'll see yep. if they will, if they will pop up um, and, and, and just kind of make it happen. But Absolutely. so as we, as we go into the show, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Some of them may, and just so you know, whoever is watching the show, I never, ever, I, I never prepare my guests. Never. Because I, <laughs> I want, I always want my own reaction to be authentic. I don't yes. care what any, I don't care if what Oprah does or what Tyler Perry does. I don't care because I like my conversations to be organic. I like it to be, I like you to know you're coming on my podcast and you know the title of my podcast and that's all there is to know. So mm -hmm. I never tell them what to expect. It messes it up. It makes you rehearse. It makes you not be authentic, quite frankly. Yep. So yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> so the first question is going to be just like a, a more like a, a, an icebreaker. So tell yeah. us something fun, something weird, something you know, I don't know, different about you. My favorite go-to icebreaker about myself to help my guests know what I'm thinking about is I have three nipples. And I do. Whoa. Uh, yeah, and most people do not expect to hear that, but it's true. <laughs> so I'm officially a weirdo. And um, I'm officially. happy. So 
maybe you can now kind of get an idea of what are we asking what are you looking for yes. yes 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 well i have a obscurity thing too so um i have one double jointed elbow and one is not so um i when i was a little kid i was in my yard and i was chasing a dog and i fell and broke my elbow <laughs> so when they said it it is double jointed <laughs> So yeah, it's just a very odd, weird thing. But when I bend it all the way out, people usually get a little weird about it. Oh my goodness! So can you like dislocate it and then and relocate it back or not? I probably could, but I'm afraid to go yeah, that, that far. That sounds with it. painful. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. also, um, and, and thank you for sharing that. Obviously, as a pediatrician, my mind goes elsewhere. But you know what? Hey, yeah, we're here, sure. and the show is <laughs> going. So we are at the quarter hour. The show is called the Parents of Queers Podcast. The podcast where I, Dr. Lulu, a parent of a queer child, a young adult mm -hmm. in this case, takes the advantage of, of just pushing the envelope a little bit and talking to other parents of queer kids who may or may not be at, in fact, I don't think you ever get there. I don't think you're ever at a space where it gets okay, only because we live in a world that is largely homophobic. So, you know, but hey, I'm talking to those moms and dads out there <laughs> Or, you know, mappas who are able to speak, who want to speak and talk about their story. I happen to have a mom today who is double jointed um, in the sense that she's <laughs> a parent of a queer child and she's also an author. One of the special things I do on all of my podcasts because I'm an author is feature authors as well. I mean, it has to be relevant. If you write about sci-fi, I may not have you on my on a podcast, but if you're a queer person <laughs> or a parent of a queer child and you write about sci-fi, then you can see the connection there. But generally, Absolutely. I like to give everyone a, 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 a platform. So as we go on our first break, I want to welcome uh -huh. Blair, Brian, Yay. and the book called When Ren Came Out. And, and we're going to come back in about 30 seconds to talk about this book and talk about the author and talk about what really it's like to be a parent of a queer child. And if you know me, you know, I call them POQs, parents of queers. Um, I actually own that trademark. <laughs> and um, yeah, so you can't, you can't have it. Can't but you have know it. what, let's <laughs> go on break and we'll be right back because I have to protect my money maker, which is my vocal cords. So I can <laughs> go on break really quickly so I can drink some water and then we'll uh -huh. keep talking. So get your water, sis, and let's All right, mm -hmm. let's do it. Well, I welcome. So what are your pronouns, ma'am? She, her. She, her. So my pronouns are also she, her. One of the mm -hmm. things I try to do is try to normalize conversations about asking about pronouns. I, I don't yep. remember all the time, but every time I remember, I ask it so that my brain can get used to me saying, hello, my name is Dr. Lulu, and my pronouns are she, her. Yeah, One of these days, I'm going to get it. But yeah. Yeah, I so, know. I'm in the same boat with you. Yes, 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 yes. So For let sure. me see, because I did take some notes, and I wanted you to tell us, just introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about you, your childhood, and you as a parent. Anything but you as a parent of a queer child for now. Just your childhood. Anything you want to talk to us about, just introduce yourself, and let's kind of get the... the, the the ground soft a little bit before we go into obviously the reason here, which is, believe it or not, not your book, but the fact that you're a parent of a queer child. Very few parents of queers want to speak. So I'm going gonna, I'm right. gonna to go for it. Yes. Sounds good. So tell me a little bit about yourself, childhood, growing up, all of that good stuff. Yeah. So I'm one of five kids and I grew up in a pretty traditionally minded family. You know, I went to a Catholic school and graduated from a Catholic high school and yeah, and, and it was a great experience. And so there was a lot of things that kind of got programmed as a result of that. So that, you know, we'll speak to that probably a little bit later, but you know, it, it was a great childhood and, you know, pretty normal, I guess, if there is such a thing as a normal childhood. Um, and I have two kids. I have a, um, I have a daughter, Jay, and uh, their pronouns are he, they. And then I have a son, Wyatt, and uh, his, he's a he, he, him. I forget those. The pronouns are always something difficult for me to remember. Um, but I love to like garden and writing has always been something I've always wanted to do um, since I was really little. I vividly remember being about seven 
And I was in my room and I was scribbling on my little notebooks and, you know, just coming up with these crazy stories. And, and I've always loved to read. So I, I feel like when you write, you read a lot as well. So it's just been something that's been on my heart. And I kind of didn't really give myself permission to be a writer for the longest time. I really wanted it probably deeper than I knew, but I always was like, well, I need to earn a living and that kind of thing. And I turned 40 ish and I started reevaluating my life and trying to decide where the happiness would be. And so I decided to just go for it. And so it's been about three years now that I've been um, writing books and publishing and it's been a, you know, learn as you go road. And I'm sure you're really familiar with it, but you know, you just bite off more than you can chew and then you figure out how to eat it <laughs> once you've got it. So yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. How amazing. Oh my goodness. We could have the whole podcast just based on that amazing introduction. <laughs> so we have a few things in common. I was also born and I mean, raised, I'm a cradle Catholic. And I did, you know, even though I haven't finished reading your book, I did see that John, obviously you are like Catholic in the, or the person in the, the characters in the book are Catholic. And I was going to also ask you, one of the questions was how much of the book is, is real and how much of it is fiction. One of the things that mm -hmm. we do as authors, well, I I'm a, I'm a nonfiction writer. I, I don't know anything about fiction, but I'm a mm -hmm. nonfiction writer. One of the things about nonfiction writers is we always put a little bit of ourselves in the work that we do, just like yep. coaches. We are all the best poised to coach the person that you are, the person that you used to be. So that's why I gravitated to, was a natural gravitation to being a, 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 being a, a, a coach um, and being a pediatrician and therefore working with parents of kids and hopefully we can. Hi, Cordell, welcome to the party. So um, this is so exciting. The characters in the book are Catholic, obviously. I, I noticed you said you have a daughter and their pronouns are he, they. And I wanted to, to touch on that a little bit because I want parents to know that it is okay to not fully get it right off the, 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 the gate or whatever they say. It's, it's okay to not always, to even fumble with the, with the pronouns yet. And oh, but the fact that you said daughter and the pronouns are he and they, I was like, yeah, that is classic. And not to judge because <laughs> that's not the, the, the case here. It's to show other parents that you just keep going. When you're learning how to ride a bicycle, you don't fall off one day and say, that's it. I'm not riding anymore. You fall off and get back on and keep going. And eventually... You would, you would develop you the muscle there. memory. Mm -hmm. So yep. obviously your child was assigned female at birth. And because I have a different angle where I come with my book, my book is more educational and less, less storytelling, lots of stories mm -hmm. in it, but less is more of a nonfiction, a how-to book. I am learning to use they, them for anyone that I don't know their pronouns and of course ask them their pronouns and then use the pronouns that they say. They have, they, is theirs. And so if your child who's assigned female at birth says he, they, then we should go with he first before they. But this is just for, this is more for educational purposes for whoever can hear my voice just for us to learn because when you're given knowledge, it's never for you to keep the knowledge to yourself. It's always for you to dissipate it. So hopefully yeah. someone has learned something today. Thank you so much for sharing. A little bit about your background. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you is when it comes to being a, a parent of a queer child and also obviously having other children who are not necessarily queer kids, how have you been able to find your soul in, in parenting um, multiple kids and, you know, with some in the queer community and some not in the queer community, if, if I might ask? Well, I think that before I answer that question, I do want to speak a little bit to the pronouns. Um, you know, we're still kind of working through that. You know, Jay has is still, I think, in the questioning phase. And, you know, we've tried out some, some, some other combinations and we're still just trying to figure that out. And one of the things that I always tell Jay is you don't have to decide anything right now. You know, you're, you're a teenager. You know, these things will change. Don't be in a rush to classify and categorize yourself right now you know, give yourself some life experience and then see. And it's, it's unfortunate that even in the queer community, kids are still forced to choose one. It's like, pick one, pick one now, you know, and, and if you go back, then you're just, 
you're a mess, you know, and that I think is unfortunate. So I, I wish more kids would give themselves some space and the parents that parent kids like that, just let, let them decide and quit trying to force them into a box. Well, it's so just... even, yeah, even, even, even if, you, if we don't go any further, if that's all we talked about today, you have made a very important point. If, for those of you who don't know, I'm a TEDx speaker, and I'm currently working on my second TEDx talk. And today I finally came up with my, my parting, my, my closing quote, which I was so proud of. I sent it to a few people and they're like, oh my God, this is so good. But besides <laughs> that, in the TEDx talk, one of the things I mentioned is asking your child, so, well, are you gay or are you not gay? Putting them in a corner, like I need to know right now. Dot com, is not right. in fact a way to get your child to share about their sexuality. No, and, and you, they might not know. Them. Yeah, you can. They you might cannot, not even know. Yeah, you cannot touch them. So, Courtney, welcome to the party. Courtney, believe it or not, this is my this is the first episode of our Parent of Queers podcast. Yay! Yeah. This is the first time, and this is my first guest. I'm so excited. Looks like you might have to come back because I don't think we're going to get much very far today. <laughs> because, today. Because there's just so much to, to talk about. On there a very a rare occasion, I get a parent of a queer child. And, and I, I have my knowledge, but I'm also the teacher. So I don't always want it to be like, well, Dr. Lulu said. But it's always good to hear from someone else who's walking my walk and, and walking my talk, so to say. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we say is asking your child, so are you gay or are you not gay? You can put whatever word you want. Gay, demis, right. whatever you want to put there. Putting them in a corner, boxing them, cornering them is not the way to get them to, in fact, say, yes, I am. For a simple fact that gender and sexuality are both fluid. Mm -hmm. And now we know that more than 57% of U.S. adults, LGBT persons are actually bisexual. And that means many of us are living heterosexual, passing as heterosexuals when we're really not. And so you will never know those people who, because they're in a heterosexual relationship. So, so if asking them, they might never tell you. So I'm, come, I'm going somewhere with this. So if your child tells you, you need to give them space. And the most important question to ask is, how can I help? Or what can I yeah. do? What would you want me to do? Or ask yourself, what does my child want from me today? So hopefully, you know, we're, 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 we're learning already. I'm so excited about this because um, obviously the books, your book says When Ren came out, which I know, I, you know, because I've read some of it and I've, you know, I've kind of gone back and forth with you on LinkedIn, which if you're not on LinkedIn, you need to get on LinkedIn. <laughs> Courtney, I don't told you this, you need to get on LinkedIn. But um, I love that, you know, you are talking about coming out, a phrase that I am seeking to extinguish with my book called Invited In. But let's talk about why you chose the title when Ren came out. I have read a bit, a bit about it. I'm a veteran, so I really identify mm -hmm. with a bunch of, I'm a Catholic, I'm a veteran. Um, <laughs> so I, I do identify with a few of the things going on in this book. But why did you right. choose the name when Ren came out? And if you'd like to know more about the book, She's going to tell us at the end. So you got to stay till the end, right? Yeah, stay but, for the whole uh, conversation. Yes, ma'am. But so tell yes. me, how did you choose the title when Ren came out? And this is, I want you to, as you're answering that question, get ready for the, the, our second break, which is at the bottom of the hour, where we're going to now come back and talk about you as a parent of a queer child and what is your quote unquote coming out story in your own case. And I okay. use that fiercely when I'm talking to parents. I use coming out for parents, but I do not use coming out for queer people. And I, we can talk mm -hmm. about that later. But yeah. But tell us, why did you choose the beautiful name when Ren came out? And why Ren? Which is one of my ah. favorite birds, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, because it's a delicate, bordering on feminine, I guess, a little bit. Um, the reason I chose the name for the book was when... You know, I started kind of going through some of these similar things with my child. The book is very much fiction. There's a couple scenes in it that are from my life, and I can, I'll be happy to point those out a little later. But um, when I was looking for information, because I wanted to understand, you know, when, when my child was telling me this is how they were feeling, I wanted to understand, and, and I turned to books. I always turned to books. And when I started to look for something that would 
you know, maybe tell the story of someone that has gone through something similar, I realized it didn't exist. Out yes! There. Stop right and so, <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so true. About a year ago when I wanted to go up on this journey, which I know you had mentioned, you didn't know. A year ago on July 5th, I retired. I hung up my stethoscopies right there on that wall. There. <laughs> there. About a year ago, July 5th, okay? My oh, happy anniversary. Son. Yeah, thank you so much. My middle man child, which is what I used to call the middle, first man child, middle man child, and last man child. So my middle man child, my, my MMC, was, my, was helping me look, look up uh, on, on, on um, Google. And when he got to page 23 of Google, he said, Mom! I said, what? He said, can I stop now? Because I can't find anybody. Yes. Yep. And I, I felt like the, the book, I really wanted to speak to that, that traditionally minded mother or father. And I knew that that title would grab them right away. They would know immediately what the book's about and it would maybe pique their interest, you know, to maybe learn more. And my ultimate hope for the book is that people read it with an open heart and that more allies are created after reading the story and, you know, following through their life and understanding completely because that's what the kids need and, and adults too. I mean, all of our LGBTQ people need us to stand up for them. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do through the book. I love it. I am in love with it. Obviously in today's world, coming out is still the main, you know, verbiage that, you know, majority of people in the queer community use and non-queer community. But hopefully mm -hmm. all of y'all who can hear my voice will We'll, we'll hang tight for my second TEDx talk called Invited Coming Out versus in, in, Coming Out versus Invited In. And I'm calling it Let's Rethinking, Rethinking the Something, Rethinking Something. I don't know. I'm still working on the title, but I'm using Rethinking, you know, the, the queer child or something. But I want mm -hmm. people to know, yes, I'm so proud of you because in today's world, coming out is still the main word this is so main phrase this is so powerful that you used it and you're right three things just three words and boom you, you pick it up and one thing i know that people do is you pick it up and you hide it <laughs> i'm just gonna come out and say it now people mm -hmm. walk past it see if anybody's looking grab it and hide it. <laughs> and hide it i wish they wouldn't but i know they i will. agree and you and know yeah. what hey as long as you pick it up i'm good so we're gonna go on a quick break the Sounds show good. is called The Parent of Queers Podcast. It's the very first episode, and I Yay. could not have a better... Did you even know that you were, <laughs> did you know you were my first? Did I tell you that already? Or no, you? I had no idea. No idea. Yeah, and we're, so, we're doing this together first timers. Yes, yes. I, I, have, <laughs> I have four podcasts, and I have a radio show, and I've been doing Facebook Lives for four years straight. So interviewing is not the thing, but I've been waiting. <laughs> I have... I have 11, I think 11 moms in my Parents of Queer support group, and I haven't really sold it to them. I just didn't. I just like, okay, you know, I'm going to find the right one. And then you came along and I was like, boom, let's do it. So I'm so <laughs> awesome. excited, everyone. My name is Dr. Lulu, a.k.a. The Mom Nutrition. Yes, I'm a real doctor. Look me mm -hmm. up. Follow me on social media. I am a life coach also in my spare time. I work with parents of queers, and I have none other than Blair, Brian, Yay! Uh, just an awesome parent of queer and an author and a beautiful human being. Someone said you look like Brooke Shields. I, I know, that's Shields. so funny. Is that the one, the one who, the, who did the, the, the Blue Lagoon or something? Blue Lagoon, yeah. Oh, yep, boy. Yep. Okay. Right. Hey, I'm almost 50, so I'll take the compliment. Right. I am 53, honey. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, this last half of I this know, life. Which is why I know the movie, right? uh-huh <laughs> because i'm old For enough sure. to know the movie so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to ask you to tell us your coming out story i can't wait all right thanks so it's called the parents of queers podcast see you in a second and we are back <laughs> also another reason why i take breaks is because when the podcast becomes famous i'm going to insert mm -hmm commercials so Good yeah you. yes we have, to, we have to look forward into the future and so exactly. we are speaking with none other than blair brian i have probably said her name 27 times so you can hear <laughs> okay go find her go find her other books 
And um, this one particularly that concerns me is called When Ren Came Out. So Blair, Brian, what mm -hmm. is your coming out story as a parent of a queer child? I think it's kind of probably an unconventional story just because, um, so I always kind of knew, you know, as a mother, you just have a feeling, you know, you just know, like, you, you know, your child. And I would say Jay was around 10 or 11, maybe. And I just had a feeling, you know, and so for me, um, it was never a question of if I was going to accept them or, you know, if there was going to be any huge kind of issue, you know, I've always, I've always been accepting, but I also think, um, it's different being accepting and not having that in your life, like being accepting from a distance versus accepting and loving with that situation. And so, um, you know, it, you go through this whole gamut of emotion when you think about parenting a queer child, you know, you, you have all these fears, you know, the world, it can be a really hateful place and you don't want your child to be a target of that hate. And, one of the most interesting things to me that I've learned even in the last couple months since I've written the book is parents have the same feelings. So it, it's really fascinating to me. And I read your story on your website and you have the exact same feelings I did. And I thought in my mind, and I'm sure that almost every, you know, traditionally minded heterosexual person thinks if a, if a gay person has a gay child, it's going to be an easier row to hoe. And it absolutely is not because you, at the heart of it, it is your child. You want them to be accepted and loved, and you know it's going to be a harder path for them. And that is one of the big things that shocked me about it. You know, I've talked to a, a couple of really people that have come into my life since I've written the book about it, and that was just an epiphany that it doesn't matter you know, what, what sexuality you are, you still worry about your child if they're queer, you know, you, they have all of these other, these other things to worry about, you know, like, for instance, you know, when my child goes somewhere with their boyfriend or girlfriend, if it's, if it's a girl and she, and Jay grabs their hand in public, it's, it's a scary thing because you don't know. And as a, you know, as a heterosexual person, I don't think twice before I grab my boyfriend's hand in public. I don't think twice before I give him a kiss. And that is, you know, that is a really kind of huge fear that parents have. And so you have all of these things that kind of come into your head, you know, that are a little bit different. Um, so I always kind of knew. And so we went on a trip um, to Virginia Beach and I was just waiting for the conversation to happen. I thought for sure it would happen during all this time we had in the car. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. So I actually um, I marked the occasion by buying a little rainbow turtle. <laughs> and I was waiting for this moment. And we, we talked a little bit about it. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, Jay, Jay laughs about it now. But Jay has a little frustration that she didn't have that or that they didn't have that moment where they – came out to me because I, I already asked the question. I already knew and I just was waiting for confirmation. Um, but one of, the, one of the biggest lessons that I really want everyone to hear, and I've been shouting this from the, the rooftops since I've learned this, and this isn't something that I learned. It was during a conversation that I had with another, um, another queer man named Steve from Bursting Through. And when I always thought and I would always say you know when a, a queer person would tell me you know their truth I would be like oh it doesn't matter it doesn't matter I love you anyway and I never realized how dismissive that was until <laughs> until just recently and it does matter it does matter because your child wants to be loved not because of something or in spite of something they want to be loved period and that's, that was a huge, huge lesson that I learned. So that was a pride lesson I learned during Pride Month. So it's, I, I love you, period. That's it. You don't have I to say. I love it. As a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, nothing else. It, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I mean, you've touched on so many beautiful things. As a matter of fact, most, there was a Facebook community that I was in a while back before my first Facebook account got hacked. And I asked the question, I said, what will you do when your child comes out? I didn't say if, I said when. And 80% of the comments were like, I've always, I've, um, oh, 
Is that all? Or, or oh, no, I think when, when your child says I'm gay or whatever, I don't know how it was. They were like, is that all? Oh, I've always known what's for dinner. Go clean your room. And I could tell all of the parents were trying their best to minimize it, to make it look like the impact is less. But you and I know that that's bullshit. And yes, I can say bullshit on my own show, okay? <laughs> it is bullshit because the truth is a piece of your heart has an infection when your child tells you that they're gay. So stop already saying, oh, I've always known, oh, what's for dinner? That's not true. And besides, that's the wrong answer because it takes a lot. If you look up the numbers, because again, I do research because, I'm, because my own book comes from a different angle. The highest point of suicidal ideation is when, one, when the child realizes that indeed they are queer, and two, when they share about it. You will not hear me use the word come out because I don't. I'm trying to change that. Change when that. they sure. disclose it, I use disclose, I use share, or when I want to go with the negative impact, I use come out. Because mm -hmm. coming out is never a one-time thing. Oh, just, so what are you? Are you, are you not? No. Because the child has to always think, are you safe? Right. Are you safe? Yep. And if you are not safe, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to disclose this piece of myself. I, Dr. Lulu, I had an abortion when I was younger. Today, abortion is criminalized. So you know what I'm doing now? I'm telling everybody that my abortion gave me options. Now, how many baby daddies in today's world even know that their baby mamas had abortions? How many of them have to tell or not tell? So when somebody tells you something like that, you do not have a right to say, oh, well, what else is new? No, because for you, telling you that might mean life and death for them because now they've told you and now that their safety net is broken. And so the kids are struggling. A lot of them struggle a lot. So the two times that they have a highest rate of suicidal ideation, when they realize themselves and when they tell you. So if you don't know anything, know now that telling you is huge yeah. up until life and death. Of course, it's not only about the suicide, but it is partially. And therefore, diminishing it will not work. Thank you for Hopefully not diminishing. I don't know exactly what your words were. You're going to tell us now. But, but the fact that you celebrated it, what they want is for you to affirm them. Most people want acceptance, but really the word is affirmation, which is different mm -hmm. from acceptance, better than acceptance. So thank you so much for sharing. I happen to have been to Virginia Beach. I love the statue of Poseidon. Yes. <laughs> yes. I used to live in Virginia. So thank you so much uh -huh. for taking me down memory lane a little down bit. Down memory so, lane. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, what, now again, oh, and another thing I wanted to mention on this show, I only especially want the parents to tell their own side of the story. As you could have heard, you've heard me ask her twice, what mm -hmm. is your own? Because your child's ultimate story belongs to them forever. So your yeah. job is to tell it from your own perspective. And that's what the parents exactly. are doing for all the potential judges out there, judges out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, so from your own perspective, sweetheart, how did you, you react? For me, I took off and I ran. But it's not <laughs> about me. It's about me. I, how did you react? I am usually very, like, I usually keep words inside. Mm -hmm. I don't like to react and say things, you know, in the heat of the moment that you can't ever take back. Because I think that words are really powerful. And as a writer, for me, they're even more powerful. But... I, I feel like it ta it's almost like when you hear that information, you're, I felt almost like the entire house, like a bomb had gone off and our entire world kind of collapsed a little bit. And what I realized was that it gave us the opportunity to build back something that was stronger and something that was more sustainable. And mm -hmm. so, and when you're, when you're talking about, I mean, I've had my own struggles with authenticity and been on my own journey to try to find that for myself. And I'm getting there, you know, it's, it's a journey that pretty much will take the entire life, but I'm getting closer and closer to who I think is my authentic self. And 
when I think about my child not feeling like they can be authentic, that just breaks my heart. And as a mother, that's what I want for both of my children to mm -hmm. like, to have that authenticity, to have that live their life the way that their heart calls them to live it and to just, you know, be truthful and find that joy that you get when you are living on purpose and, you know, instead of hiding and lying and, you know, putting up all of these defenses and, you know, there's a whole lot of ugliness that can happen and lead people to just, you know, to really self-destructive places when they feel yeah. like, like no one, no one will accept me. I'm, you know, it's really scary as a parent that a child can go there because in, in their mind, I mean, you're, you're so elevated as their parent. And when they take that moment to tell you their truth, that, you know, that's a very vulnerable time for them. So I'm not surprised by that statistic that you shared at all. I feel like that makes perfect sense, you know, because you think about how much of a child, any queer child, that has probably consumed so much of their brain power and worry and stress and anxiety. And they're just living it with that secret. And they want to be able to tell you but they're afraid that you're not going to accept or love them anymore. Yes. And that, that is really, that was kind of the whole point of the book and why I wrote it because I, I felt like there's room for more conversations like this to be had. You know, there, there aren't a lot of people in the traditionally minded community that want to talk about it. And I get that. And in you today's know, world is even worse with the political climate and just yes. all the things that are coming down the pipeline. If there's ever been a time for the mama bear to become an incredible hawk, hawkina, it's now. It's <laughs> yes. now. You know? It's now. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much for your vulnerability. It takes a lot. I love you. I want to, before I forget, invite you to come and... Um, join my, my weekly Parents of Queer support group. I don't know why I didn't think about it. We meet every Monday evening at 6 p.m. Central and any Parents of Queer out there who will be interested in joining. Um, the first okay. Monday night is free, but I, I always want them to just come and see does it even, it doesn't even make sense. And if it doesn't, I completely, it's okay. But mm -hmm. also because I do a lot of events and so I'm usually the one mom of a queer child Thank like I have been looking for another mom who would just Aww. many don't want to talk. I have a lot of people. My Facebook community has twenty five hundred parents who don't want to talk. I feel like there's a lot of shame. Anything. Yeah, there's a lot of shame, and, and, that's and they what feel I'm judgment. To, and I'm trying to avoid that because the truth is, the only reason why you will even call the word shame is because you stop and make it about you. When Absolutely. you stop making it about you, there's nothing to be ashamed of. If indeed God in there, because I think God is non-binary, if God in their infinite wisdom created your child and gave your child the faculty to know right from wrong, then your child is perfect just the way they are. And so I am always the only parent of a queer child who wants to speak. So I am, I've just been so excited just Knowing that you're going to be there, yes, you are white, and yes, you could be Karen, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, and we could use some more people of color, but you know what? Even amongst the non people of color, I cannot get parents to talk because of that factor, that shame factor. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, girl. I'm just so relieved. And we're going to go on a quick break. And when we mm -hmm. come back, I'm going to read an excerpt from the book. And then um, I know, like I said, I know we're going to have part two because <laughs> education is so needed so um as soon as we get up please go and schedule a second one because i need you to come back and um, but let's go on a break um so we can um so i can get myself together uh, <laughs> you're we'll so right cute back. we'll be right back, we'll be right back. <laughs> i feel like oprah but i'm just saying dr lulu we'll <laughs> right, right dr lulu <laughs> Ooh, and we are back. We are back with the Parents of Queers podcast, the first ever episode of Parents of Queers. If you can hear my voice, do me a huge favor. One, share this episode. Like, if there's ever been an episode where I cry a lot on most of my episodes, but this one is so near and dear to my heart because this one is actually about the work that I do. Most of my other podcasts are not about the work that I do, they're about the people that I serve. That's different. 
this is about the work that I do. Being a, this is about my life, being a parent of a queer child. So please, first and foremost, could you share it? And the best way to do that is to tap the triangle at the bottom right and share. Okay, my, my, my podcast guy is going to edit all this part out. But I need you all to please share it so that someone somewhere may be their life. Think about the child who's waiting. And I always end my, my emails by, P.S., your child is waiting. A lot of times there's a child out there that's waiting, just waiting for the time, waiting for the moment. I had someone very dear to me who recently, their mom called them at one o'clock in the morning, screaming and shouting. And I know how scared she got because of the same thing that we're talking about. When they first come to the realization and then when that, that moment before they tell, it's like almost like they're going to die. And a lot of people will do that. This is so real for me. So my guest today is none other than Blair Bryan. Thank you so much, my darling, for joining. Thank you for doing it. I know you had your book in mind, but I'm hoping that you see that there's a bigger reason for doing this podcast. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm glad it's your first. I'm glad I was able to, to be the <laughs> ever, ever remember me because I remember every podcast that I was there first or that mm -hmm. was my first. Um, and I'm going to read an excerpt from the book. The book, the book is called When Ren Came Out. And it's available everywhere. Great books are sold, right? Yep. I like to yep. say great books, not good books. Okay. So I'm going to read <laughs> chapter awesome. one, page four. Oh, where right. are my glasses? I don't know who I'm fooling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I'm fooling. Like, I'm no longer 53 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living girl, in denial. Girl, got to get a colorful reading glasses. Boom. You need some rainbow ones, yeah. <laughs> yes, honey, yes. <laughs> Okay, so it only takes the snag of one thread to unravel the tapestry of a seemingly perfect life. You never know what event will cause that snag to happen. When the illusion of the public facade you've carefully built crumbles and you are forced to see your world stripped bare with fresh eyes. Powerful. That's People so are cool. Coming out swinging. <laughs> Love it. And I feel uh, like freaking Oprah. I swear to God. <laughs> well, I feel like Oprah's a book club guest because I've never heard anyone read my work out loud. So that was really nice. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. That was powerful. That was powerful. I was like, I put a little, and I'm, I'm, I'm an author. So I always have a pencil yeah. when I'm reading a book. And I always, I'm all about annotating and writing. And Love <laughs> it. So how, oh my God, how did you decide on your opening statement? We've got nine minutes to go. And yes, Instagram will cut me off at the hour. So we'll have to finish up. But That's how did okay. you decide on the opening line? Well, you always want that to grab their attention. So that's what you're going for. But I think it really um, encapsulated the shame piece of it and this life that the mother worked to build. And she had all these preconceived ideas about what her daughter was going to do and be and have and, you know, how her life was going to unfold. And then, you know, when the series of events happens and her daughter tells her the truth about, you know, what her feelings truly are and, uh, you know, who she is at her core – it just completely just shatters her world. And I felt some of those similar feelings, you know, you just kind of everything that you thought you knew or every dream that you had kind of dies a little bit. And you, it is a death. Like, you know, when you were just speaking about a child saying, you know, they, they feel like almost like they're dying. They are that, that, that version of that child is gone. And, and there is some mourning and some, you know, grieving as a parent you do to let go of all of that, that you, all those preconceived plans and ideas and, you know, all that hope that you had that their life would go down this one path and you have to step back and you have to take back all of those things you put on their shoulders that weren't theirs to carry and you have to let them speak and become who they truly are. And that is a, one of the hardest lessons as a parent that you can understand. And, and I th honestly feel like that's probably why Jay was my daughter. You know, that's why Jay came to me and because I needed to learn that. And, and I have, I, you know, I, and it's still a process. And that's what I would really want parents to understand is that 
it's not linear. You're going to have all kinds of feelings about it. And all of those feelings are okay. It's okay to have those fears and those sadness and the regrets and the, you know, and that's some of the things that I talk about in the book, you know, like one of the scenes in the book is where Teresa thinks, well, then, you know, Ren, you're not going to have a family. I'm never going to be a grandmother, that kind of thing. And it's, and, and Ren says, well, how do you know? Exactly. How do you know that? You don't know that. You know, I, I, I could have them, but it would possibly be with a woman, you know? So it's just, it's a different, it's really tough as a parent to set aside all of those things and just be open enough to accept your child at their most basic level. And that has been a journey for me and I'm still on that journey and I probably will be on that journey forever and that's okay. That is okay. It is okay to not have all the answers. It is okay to <laughs> feel all the feels. One of yes. the things I like to say, I, I love you. Everything you're saying is in my book. I love it. One of the things I say, and yesterday I had a conversation with my 17-year-old son who was talking about, he's 5'11", and he was talking about how, hopefully, he says, hopefully my son will be six. He was, and, then, and then I stopped him. I said, hopefully your child. And he got it right away. Yeah. And one of the things I teach parents now is when you're expecting a child, I know, that gender reveal party, hold off on it. Let your child reveal their gender. Oh, yes, I went there. <laughs> Assigned gender at birth is was one of the biggest reasons that parents go through what they go through. Because like me, we all have plans. We all have dreams. But like I always say, we forget to include our kids in our dreams and our plans. And when our kids say, wait, 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 wait hold off. That's not my dream. Then you're like, oh, my God. And so... Let's go back and talk a little bit about the, the morning. The morning, let's be, sh let's be clear that the morning, M-O-U-R, is strictly for the parent and strictly for as long as you choose it to be. I say that because children are not mourning. They never were something else, which is why my book says invited in. Mm -hmm. You're not coming out of anywhere. And if you look at the traditional form, the traditional sense of the word coming out, you come out of poverty, deafness, I don't know, depression, bad marriage. You come out of all these negative things. Your queer child was whole and perfect before they told you, which is why they're not coming out of anything. They've always been that way. And if you agree that your child's gender has always been there or your child's sexuality has always been there, like most parents do say what you said, I've always kind of known then your child is trembling. Whose who's closet is it anyway? My favorite question to ask. Oh my goodness. Blair, <laughs> it has been beyond amazing. Thank you so much for coming. I do pray and hope that you, as you can see, that one hour is not enough. No. I hope that you choose, which is the only choice being made here, to come back on the show. And let's talk uh -huh. a little bit more about what it means to really, truly be a POQ, parent of a queer child. Mm -hmm. Let's educate the people. My ex-wife used to say educate. And yes, even as a queer person, I did not know what non-binary was. I had no idea. I never heard about it before. And it's okay to lean into the vulnerability of not knowing. Not knowing well, anything. And I, and I love, like, ask the question. Ask the question. And, and that has always been my experience with any queer person in my life. They want to be understood. Ask they the want. questions. Yes. Yeah. And, like any and doctor. Ha have, those, have those conversations. Have the conversations, exactly. Have them. And my favorite thing is to say, come from a place of curiosity. It's yes. different than coming from a place of judgment. You, the, you know when someone is asking you out of curiosity. Oh, I like your yep. accent. Where is it from? It's not curiosity. That's judgment. Because people say, oh, you have mm -hmm. an accent. Everybody has an accent. But, mm -hmm. but asking me in a different way, like I have heard a lot of people talk the way you talk. Some of them are African. Some of them are not. Am I right if I say you're mm -hmm. African? It's the same question. But it's a different way. Yeah. So note how to ask again. Are you, gay? are you gay? Are you not gay? It's not the way to ask. I don't care who you are. And, and as a parent, I always ask parents, please do not assume that your child is going to be your guru. Your child can be your guide. But your child is still a child. And many a time, your child still doesn't understand 
who they are and what's going on. So I don't use the word understand for parents. I use the word know. So be about knowing, not necessarily mm -hmm. about understanding because a lot of times they don't understand. And because you and I know that the process of coming out is ongoing, that means that mm -hmm. the understanding is also ongoing. Oh my goodness. The show has been the, the, the blah, blah, blah. I wanted to say Pride Corner. Parents of Queer Podcast, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Yeah, Black, thank you for you having me. Tell us where we can get the book. Um, and yep. anything else you want to say to a parent who is possibly going through what you and I mm -hmm. have gone through, what would you say to them in the next, I don't know, one minute so we can tell them how to go and get the book and then we'll be out. Absolutely. Like, like, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think I would tell a parent just to be just non-reaction. Mm. Just listen, 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 listen. And that's why I, I never try to say things I don't mean. If, if I have any kind of emotion come up, I usually try to, to keep quiet or ask simple questions. Just be open to have those conversations. If you don't understand, they, they want to bridge that gap. And so have those questions. And welcome to the party. Thank you so much for joining. E photography, E photography twice. Thank you so much for joining. I usually like to call the names more yeah. photography, the same Mosha, Brandon, Mosha, Brandon, Brenda. Courtney. I love her. Thank you so much. Court, Courtyard. Thank you so much. Um, Les Dunkay. Okay. Welcome. Cordell Wells. Welcome. Yacht Dealer. Welcome. Kofi Adu. Hen Drugs, welcome. Michelle Roche, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. The show has been amazing. Lifestyle, Med Wellness, also welcome to the party. And you know what, Teal Butterfly Press, you have been amazing today. Tell us how we can find you before, before Instagram cuts it off. Real quick. Right at my website, tealbutterflypress.com or at any booksellers, Amazon. Barnes and Noble, all of those. Blair Bryan and Nina. I have two pen names and I'd love to have you check them out.